Hello dear viewers and welcome to Reginald ESQ. I'm Underhook and this is my review of the Swedish tier 5 medium tank, the STRV M-42. So is this tank any good? Uh, it's average. An average tank in my opinion. Not good, not bad, just sort of in the middle there. Uh, it has a couple of good features. One of those really good features is it has the highest damaging AP gun of any tier 5 non-premium tank. I haven't checked against the premiums because there's just too many of them. But uh, against your standard tanks, it has the best, highest damaging gun alpha damage. Uh, of course, you, the trade-off is a long reload time. And it also has excellent gun depression. So this thing can fight on a hill. And if you're the kind of driver who wants to sort of uh, take a shot and then wait until you're off the radar before you pop out and take another shot, then the reload won't matter to you too much anyway. So uh, it can be good in those circumstances. Uh, on the negative side, it's um, not a fast tank. It's not slow, but it's not fast. And it gets tracked a lot. Uh, the engine gets damaged a lot. It gets ammo wrapped a lot, although it doesn't normally explode from it. And the loader gets killed a lot as well. So those are frequent. Uh, it's pretty easily damaged. Very much similar to the Largo with the, the tracks taking up a lot of the side of the tank. And even if you angle the tank, uh, you're showing a lot of track. So it does get tracked a lot. In fact, not only are these Swedish memes getting tracked a lot, but the tank destroyers get tracked a lot as well. So I've written a little ditty for you about the tracks on these Swedish tanks. Well, I thought I was the victim of a hack until I found out we had Swedish tracks. Swedish tracks. It's no steps forward and no steps back when your tank is fitted with Swedish tracks. Swedish tracks. It's impossible to stay in the black when you're constantly repairing those Swedish tracks. Swedish tracks. Our commander said, boys, there's no turning back. We said because we're brave, he said no, because we've got Swedish tracks. Swedish tracks. Swedish tracks. It's not a Alright, so enough negatives about the tank. Let's uh, compare this tank to uh, the other tanks in its class. So, I haven't put the premium tanks. If you uh, Tier 5 mediums, there are a lot of premiums. I think in the German tank tree alone, I think there's like five Tier 5 medium premium tanks. So I haven't included the premiums. This is just the standard ones, and there's enough of those as it is anyway. But to give you an idea, the, the damage per shot, it's 150 uh, with the top gun. Which, uh, when we have a look, I think the next best is the Chinu with 125. Yeah, it is. Now, you've got 410 on the G1R, and you've also got 350 on the Panzer 4 h but that's because they are firing uh, HE. If you look at their uh, non-HE guns, I think they do about 110 damage, both of them. So, uh, definitely, 150 is up there. Big damage. The Chinu is, of course, also a very good uh, gun uh, and a very good tank for a medium tank at this tier. So... Uh, and that's why I say this is an average tank. I, you know, I would rather drive the T-34, the Chinu, um, the Skoda I've driven, the Panzer IV H, those sort of tanks I've driven that I think are all probably better than this. The M4 uh, is kind of line ball for me, but I know a lot of people do like the M4 as well. Uh, the Crusader, I think, was probably not a bad tank. So this thing's all right, but I definitely wouldn't say, you know, that I prefer to drive it compared to a lot of the others. The, uh, as I said, with the, the, oh, the penetration 115 is about average, not bad, it's not the worst, it's not the best. The rate of fire is 9.93 rounds and is not that quick. So the fastest rate of fire is the Crusader with 28.45. Um, but yeah, for an AP gun, it's, uh, it's a bit of a slow reload. Um, what else can we tell you? Turret Traverse is about average for its class. The gun depression note is fantastic at 15 degrees. For tier 5 medium, 15 degrees is spectacular. And this thing is really good on hills, and that's where it shines. And uh, I suggest most games you go looking for hills because that's where you can uh, do the best work. Uh, 25 degrees of elevation isn't bad either, so it's, it's the best in class. Now, let's have a look at uh, the aiming time of 2.4, though, is a little slow. It's not the worst. I think the worst is the uh, T-34 with 2.9, but uh, that has a, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, look, it's, it's uh, a little bit long in my book, but it's okay. 
The uh, accuracy of 0.36 is about average for um, a tank of this class. The 0.34 is the best on the type T34, that's the Chinese T34. Um, and what else can we say about armor? I'll go into in more detail, but it's average, but it's not bad. You will bounce some shots with this tank. The um, acceleration and top speed. The acceleration's okay, top speed of 45. It's not a fast medium. But it's not a dog, it's alright. Reverse of 20 is uh, is not bad as well. The track traverse of 46.94 is the best in class. So it does turn well, which is another good thing. And uh, concealment wise, uh, 14.26 is pretty good. Best in class is the Crusader with 16.76. So it's not too far behind that, and it's certainly not the worst. The camouflage is adequate. Review range of 350 is the same as about every other tank in class, except for some reason the M4, which has 370. Well, actually not for some reason. It is a, probably the tallest of the tanks, so fair enough. It has the longest view range. Uh, signal range is terrible at 400 meters. I think it's the worst in class. So you may have trouble uh, keeping radio contact with your colleagues when you're a long way away. And that's about all I think I have to say on this tank as far as comparisons go. So let's have a quick look now at the grind for this tank. Pretty sure I was able to get the radio straight away. Um, the Top Gun is uh, definitely worth it. I think I don't think I've got any games for you with the first gun because it's basically the gun off the Largo. So uh, and and yeah, basically get an a increase in in damage and an increase in penetration. Um, and the aiming time increases from 2.3 to 2.5, which is a bummer. And the rate of fire drops dramatically as well. But you pretty much have to take the second gun simply because the penetration of 88 on the first gun is just not up to par. So you really only have one choice, really, of, uh, of a gun. And uh, it's not a bad gun. Just uh, got to be a little bit careful that you can't get rushed because you don't have a, a very good rate of fire. So it's not the kind of tank that you're probably going to be doing tracking shots because the rate of fire... You'd, by the time you reload, that probably tracks might be up again. So it's a tank that you really just want to hit people to do damage. But you can do good damage with it. And uh, let's now have a look at uh, Tank Studio, have a look at the armor. All right, so let's check out the armor of the STR-42. Let's, uh, STR-V42, let's have a look at the hybrid view here. I do like the way the armor's laid out of this tank. It has uh, 50 mils here in the front frontal hull section. And uh, sorry, 55 millimeters. It is the this other section on the top here is only 30 millimeters, but it's very heavily sloped. So it's basically giving the equivalent of a bit over 50. The, then when it flattens out again, the driver's set in front of the driver's viewport, etc. He goes back to being 55 again. The whole, entire front of the turret here is 55 as well. This little bit here that slopes back and is exposed to fire from the front is only 30 millimeters, but with the sloping that it has, angling it has, it comes up as being about 50 millimeters anyway. Um, there is a section here with the mantlet, but it, it's uh, it's still only 55. The cupola that you see here has a section at the front here, which is also 55 millimeters, and this bit here that is less than 55 is heavily sloped. It's only 20. Probably you could get penned here, uh, but it is heavily sloped as you can see. And this top of the turret here is 20 millimeters, also very heavily uh, angled and sloped. So at least when you're popping over doing those shots over hills. You have this part that's the most logical part to try and shoot. It does have 55 millimeters of armor, so light fire, you can still bounce it. Or if they're aiming at you from an angle uh, at that, you might still get a bounce out, out of it. So you can bounce shots in this tank. You can't rely on it, but you can. The side armor, though, is pretty trash at only uh, 25 millimeters, uh, as is the, re oh, the rear is 30 millimeters. Top deck is uh, 9 millimeters all round, so artillery will, of course, uh, do a lot of damage to you. It does appear to be a collar in front of the um, turret ring, and the turret ring is uh, 55 millimeters as well. So from frontal fire, you can't really, even if you angle it a little bit, the side is uh, a bit too weak. You can see it's come about 40, so you really need to keep it hardly angled at all. It does actually angle itself a little bit. So this tank is designed to fight like completely front on like that. It's not designed to be angled at all. Uh, but so you get basically 55 mils of pen. You won't bounce a lot, but you will bounce the odd angry shot. Now, I should mention before we get to the gameplay that I have fitted a um, coated optics to improve the view range. Really didn't want to be standing, uh, wanted to be 
moving while I was spotting his tank, so I've got coded optics instead of binoculars. I have a gun lane drive to speed up that uh, the aiming time because I didn't want to be exposed for too long. You could go with a uh, a gun rammer if you want to speed up the reload because the reload is slow. But I really just want to keep myself exposed for as little as time as possible, which was I went for the fast aim time. And I've got vents fitted to try and just improve uh, all the skills overall. My crew uh, are currently working on uh, concealment for the commander, uh, snapshot for the uh, gunner, the driver's working on smooth ride, and the uh, radio guy's working on concealment as well. Uh, they're all in about the 60s and will vary. Uh, I'll let you know if they weren't fully trained in the gameplay. Let's have a look. Alrighty then. So it's uh, we're in our tier five tank. It's a tier six game. The map is Live Oaks, and I decided to go this way um, because this tank has great hill fighting abilities. I decided to uh, use the tank's abilities. Always a good idea to uh, know what your tank's abilities are and try and use them whenever you can. So yeah, that's what we're doing. So there are two enemy artillery, so I do have to watch out for that because this thing uh, can get pretty badly damaged by artillery. And hill fighting is, I find, when you often get damaged. I first was looking at that bush and I thought, nah, it's a bit of a tank destroyer thing to do and I'm not utilizing the gun depression of the tank, which is what I really want to do. So I really want to take an active role. So I decided, nah, nah, I'm just gonna move up. And so our uh, scouting tank there has done some spotting already, which is really good. So I'm going to see if I can now just poke up here. M4A1 Stuart, that's the Chinese scout tank, and we get a good hit into him. And you can see there that the high alpha damage on this tank pretty much took half his health off, uh, or close to it. So it does, uh, it is bad for scouts to get shot by this tank. See if we can get this T-34. And we miss, unfortunately. So he was going to rush me then, but he didn't. We're getting some spotting damage here as well, which is good. Can we get this guy? And I know he hasn't got very good gun depression, so I I uh, quickly back back. I thought he hit me, but it was actually artillery uh, that hit me. And artillery did 123 damage to me just then and stunned my crew. And uh, yeah, that is the thing now with hill fighting. It's uh, now that artillery is even more accurate than it was before. Uh, you really are sort of a glutton to get hit. Although you don't have to worry too much because most of them are probably trying to hit the armorless TDs. <laughs> anyway, so just sort of watching. I didn't want to like take a chance going around this corner if that T34 was going to pop the ridge again. So. I started to back up again, but now it looks like he's actually been destroyed, so I can uh, take a bit more of a chance here. KV-1, not good to trade shots, but you see that we actually blocked that shot from the KV-1, uh, which is a bit of a miracle. Maybe he's got the stock gun or something, because it said 85 damage. I think the top gun actually does more damage than that, so we might have been lucky, he might have a stock gun. But we actually bounced his and he bounced us. Uh, I really had no chance of penetrating the turret of the KV-1, but I didn't have another shot, so I just took it. Here I go for between the tracks and actually end up just hitting his tracks and doing no damage whatsoever. So uh, going over the hill there was not rewarded. Although I probably got uh, some spotting damage uh, for tracking him. But anyway. So now I see this T67 here and I, I don't wanna go over that other side of the hill there without getting this T67 first. So we come up, um, he's not looking at us, now he is. Uh, he must have just fired because he doesn't return fire. And we get a nice shot, you can see there these sort of tanks, this gun really does take a lot of the health off pretty quickly. And I shoot pretty soon because I didn't want to take a hit from that, that 6-7. Get uh, splashed by artillery again. This time it does uh, only one unit of damage to us, which is kind of good. Uh, we do get stunned, of course, but uh, we recovered quickly, so it's good. Now I'm going to use... I don't want to go straight over shoot this tank. I want to use these bushes on my left and trees as cover before I shoot. So we're more than 15 meters behind, so we should be able to shoot here in relative safety. And we've got a crit, we only tracked him. And I'm getting, I've been hit by a Marauder. Someone else gets the kill and I get hit again. I block the second shot from the Marauder. Uh, I don't know how he spotted us. Maybe there's a couple of gaps in the bushes there that he managed to spot us. You have to be careful too, in World of Tanks, apparently there are, are some bushes that don't provide cover. Um, I don't know who possesses this top secret knowledge of which bushes provide cover and which ones don't. 
but I wish they would tell us all so that we know. Uh, maybe they could put a big sign next to the bushes that says, This bush does not provide cover, or something like that. That would be handy. Uh, so it looks like we've got a shot here on artillery. I'm waiting till it fully aims. Uh, one, because I've got lag, so it's better if I wait a second after it's fully aimed to be actually fully aimed. And two, because this gun does not have a high rate of fire, uh, misses are really costly. So you really want to, I, I feel anyway, that you really want to make sure that you're hitting. And you can see here I'm using every bush as I move forward, trying to keep myself concealed for as long as possible. And we might be able to pay back the martyr here. And we do get a payback on the martyr. So it couldn't have been the martyr that spotted us from that distance. I don't know how we got spotted back there, but anyway. Uh, yeah. So much for the 15 meter wall, huh? All right, now we have got, what tank is that, guys? A T1 Heavy. Can we pin the T1 Heavy from the side? Yes, we can. 172 damage. That's a good roll. It hits like a heavy sometimes, this thing. I fire again. It looked like it probably hit, but I don't know if it did. I just blind fire again. That one looks like we went nowhere near it. And I don't think we did hit it with that second hit. Maybe we did. Anyway, he's got not much health left, and we bounce off his turret. Bit of bad luck there. As you can see, it's not uh, an accurate tank at long range. You can't hit what you want to hit, although it does generally hit the tank. Uh, not like the tank destroyers that completely miss. This medium tank seems to have better accuracy than the tank destroyers. Um, anyway, so now we've got a Paul out of luck IKV-65 who has no armor and we completely miss after I just said the accuracy is not too bad. Um, and we got in that time, 162 damage, which is nice. So I feel sorry when I see an AKZ-65 because after driving the thing, um, yeah. Anyway. Uh, I, I took a shot because I knew someone was going to kill us soon and we missed by a mile. And that's the end of the game! Alright, so in that game you just saw the crew was actually 100% trained. Uh, so the, the extra attributes which I mentioned earlier were kicking in, a bit of camouflage and such. So that game we got a confederate badge, it was a class 1 game, and that was the game where I actually got my mark of excellence on the tank. Uh, we did uh, over a thousand damage and we hit a lot of tanks. Uh, obviously we got a confederate badge, so yeah, I, that goes without saying, doesn't it? Uh, we finished on top for uh, experience on our team, and damage wise we didn't, the M6 did more damage, doing 1400 damage. But we did 1168, which is pretty good for this tank. And next screen, uh, we fight 18 shots, 13 of them hit. Of the 13 that hit, 9 penetrated. So nothing sort of fantastic there, but it still does okay. Uh, what can we say? Uh, more than half the damage was long range, so it's pretty good performance when you consider it was long range shooting. Um, we received 3 hits, only 1 of them penetrated. So we bounced 1 from the Marta 38T and... I can't remember the other one. We got splashed a couple of times. Uh, what else did we do? We spotted one. We damaged nine tanks. That's a lot. And destroyed three of them. Doing about 340 assistance damage too, probably when we tracked that KV-1. And we made a bit of cash. So, uh, yeah. The map is Winterberg. And this time, dear friends, we are bottom tier. Yes, we're tier 5. And the enemy has brought tier 7 tanks to the battle. How dare they? Anyway, uh, how can we do, how will we do at bottom tier? Well, I figure I'm going to move up here because, you know, I've got the gun depression. I'm a medium tank. I don't really want to be fighting uh, their higher tier tanks directly if I can. Uh, and you saw, yeah, KV-1, I can't pin the turret and stuff. I thought... Yeah, same for the T1, I'll have trouble pinning it from the front. So I decided to go up here, away from the heavy tanks, see if we can maybe make ourselves useful at this tier by doing some spotting, something like that. Anyway, just seeing if I've got some shots over there. And getting in here, I was going to go across there, I might be a bit late, I'm not that fast at tanks, so I might get seen and spotted if I cross the road. So I decided to come up this way, and then I think, oh, pull in here behind these buildings, I might be able to get a shot on these uh, tanks down here so let's see how we go and I fire through the brick building assuming that he was there and I do hit that uh, type T-34 the Chinese tank but bounce off him I fire again and bounce again he is angled uh, but I think I also have bad luck I get shot by left but I don't worry about it but then I get shot again and I go, whoa and we snapshot and hit him which uh, takes a lot of his health off 
So yeah, I, when I got shot by Leopard, I thought I'll take a little bit more time, get another shot off, and then I'll move. But I didn't realise he had uh, an auto loader. So uh, we we cop. I don't know. Maybe it was an auto. Loader, maybe just a really high rate of fire. But anyway, pop out, get another shot into him, and um, he's hurting. And this time he has moved. Uh, and I get shot at by Tistic 7 and we bounced it, folks. So in that instance, we were almost directly firing him. So we fired at the front of our tank. Then we started to angle as I started to turn. So hit the front of our tank on an angle and that's why the T-67 bounced. We had a bit of luck. Had I not uh, started to turn as he fired, he may probably have penetrated me. But it looks like we, uh, we managed to bounce him. So anyway, a bit of luck. You've got to have some luck when you're taking some chances. Well, you don't have to. Sometimes you don't. Anyway... Um, I'm now trying to see if I can see this T-67. I can't. I don't want to stay out there because he's got better view range than me. So I pop out, pop back. But I think, no, nah, I'm going to go for it now. Take another chance. And there was the... Is that the T-67? No, that's not the T-67. There goes the T-67. That is, in fact, the tank strike. I took a shot at him and missed, but he stayed there. You mustn't have known I missed, so now I'll get a chance to have a second shot at him. And we finish him. Can I get this rascal T-67? I really don't like T-67s because they're such a good tank. Anyway, I take a blind shot at that tank, and I reckon I might have hit it, because the shot went... Uh, I think I aimed too far to the right, but the shot ended up going off to the left, so I think I actually might have hit him by accident, which is good. Um, so let's see now. Trying to get some more shots. Is that? I think that guy's actually uh, behind the wall, so I'm not going to hit him. We've got a shot on this guy, though. Can we shoot through the brick wall into him? Missed. I think that was a bit of lag, guys, looking at the replay here. Because I my I aimed like past him, which is not what I would normally do. Don't know if that hit. Tank advisor advises that you are getting very close to enemy artillery. This could mean party time. So yes, we got a hit there on uh, on that tank. And Tank Advisor has advised us that uh, we are getting very close to enemy artillery. If we play our cards just right, we may in fact uh, reap the rewards of taking the chance and making our way up this flank. Now we have been very lucky though, because you can see like I think it was only myself and the Hellcat that came up on this flank at all. So we've just had incredible luck that the enemy didn't send more or better tanks up this way. What have we got here? I can't quite uh, get a shot on him. That is the Hellcat. I don't want to get spotted by the Hellcat, so I'm kind of in a way glad uh, I don't have a line of sight on him because he might spot me. Now, hopefully, when we go around this corner, we're going to find a tool. But there's a T-67. Oh, I want to kill that T-67. I hate them. Yes! Good. I hate them because they're so good, and they really wreck this tank. <laughs> All right, so, artillery. Now, I've made a mistake here. I've spotted, I've exposed myself to two of the artillery. Uh, you can see here, this guy's behind a bush, so if I hadn't have come out this far, the other one, which has surely spotted me by now, wouldn't have spotted me. And the other artillery in the back there has now seen me and has fired on me, doing uh, a big damage, 178, and also stunning me, but I still managed to uh, finish up that other tank while I stunned, because he was so close to me. Fire, and we get a hit. Can we get three artillery kills in one game? No, we can't. Now, the Hellcat is still in play. Now, my I think it's my driver is uh, currently deceased. So, I take a quick shot at this guy without fully aiming because I figured someone else was about to kill him. Having a look, though, I probably could have finished my aiming. End of the game. So, that turned out to be a mastery game. Now, I know the fact that I got track damage there but didn't actually get tracked makes it look like my track song was yeah, a bit over the top but it wasn't believe me um, these games you are seeing are pretty much here because I didn't get tracked all the time uh, the ones where I get tracked all the time I often got killed so hey that's why you're seeing it uh, I did get a killed driver though <laughs> um, so we actually got a Pescusi medal for killing I think it's two arty we almost got three and obviously you can see we hit a lot of tanks as well um, 1162 damage wasn't the biggest damage on the team. In fact, the T25 AT, which I don't know if it still is, but it was a fantastic tank destroyer. 
and the uh, OI Experimental uh, both did more damage than us, but we finished on top. Why? Because we were bottom tier. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there you go. We did uh, all right, considering, and actually looking at the enemy team, the J the Jag Panther did, is that 1,800 damage? So uh, he did the most damage of anybody, so bad luck to him on being on the losing team. Uh, it happens. And final stats, we fired 19 shots, 13 of them hit, which was not too bad in the circumstances. Of the 13 hit, 10 of them penetrated, which is not bad. We did uh, 1,162 damage, 430 something was at long range. So actually the misses, considering the range, actually probably wasn't that good. Uh, hits received three, uh, we bounced one of them, which is really nice, uh, got splashed. Uh, we spotted four vehicles, which is pretty good, damaged eight, destroying four of them, all good stuff. 303 assistance damage, because there wasn't really many people to shoot the tanks we were spotting, because um, not many people came up our flank. And, uh, yeah, good game. Thank you for watching my review of the STRV M42. I hope you enjoyed the review, and if you did, give it a thumbs up! And if you'd like to see more reviews, please subscribe to Reginald ESQ. Have fun!